Well, how do the chums to Zai, Captain of the Steves, and today, chums, I'm here to talk about No Man's Sky and what Sean Murray said that it was going to be a big year in 2024. So I just want to talk about what I think would make 2024 a big year for No Man's Sky. And if I was inside of Hello Game Studio, the sort of things I'd be looking to implement. And the reason why I say that is because now we know that the studio is working on quite an ambitious project and have been for the last five years. Some of the updates that we've seen over the last five years to No Man's Sky make a little bit more sense, especially when it comes to you know, school schoolboy type error bugs being left in and not checked thoroughly or properly. I'm wondering whether they're looking to try and wind down No Man's Sky little by little and maybe move more and more of the team over to the new project to get it over the finish line. And I think that the way and means that they could do that is by adding in some quality of life and polish updates into No Man's Sky. I mean, you're seeing still quite a lot of things happening in some of these trailers behind me that still haven't made it into iteration. So maybe just adding that extra little bit of depth and padding the game out would be a very good start into putting some longevity, life and organicness into No Man's Sky. I mean, look at that. That was June Planet. Those freighters, they're actually moving as they're flying through space. Yes, at the moment, our, our frigates and freighters are quite stationary. We do get animations of them flying over the planet now, but in space, they're still pretty static. Or, or some are, anyway. So, I'm also thinking if the Studio Hello Games could hand over some of the actual controls to the player base. That'd be quite nice. So, inside of maybe the settings, where you've got network settings and gameplay settings, all that sort of stuff, maybe have a toggle for game mode settings a little bit more in-depth than we've got now. Almost like a custom game save. However, add in toggles for you're not able to use a starter ship, so you have to find a crashed ship. You know, all those sort of settings that you see Jason play, Zane and Beeble and all that lot hitting up. If you could add all those toggles in, so then you could hit save and then set it as a game mode that you could then share with your friends or put on a Discord or something so you can hit up and actually play it inside of game. That'd be freaking brilliant. Because at the moment, I'm really worried about doing one of these survival runs like they those guys do. And I miss something. I fly into the station with the wrong ship or I do something in the wrong order. And then it's like, oh, I think I've completed it. And they're like, no, you missed this step. And I'm like, pointless. So yeah, I would like it so it's all set so I can't forget something. If they could put that in so we can add our own sort of game modes into the actual game, that'd be freaking awesome, especially if you could share them with friends, maybe through base computers or otherwise, or you can just, you know, like how you can share a bite beat with people in close proximity, share the game mode with people in close, close proximity. I've got a challenge for you. Do you wish to accept it? Yes or no? You hit yes, it comes up with the, the brief, it comes up with a setting screen, it shows you what's all been toggled, you put but enter game mode and it boots you into a new save and away you go. Be freaking awesome that I think people inside the view of us, heck yes, as well as you know adding in a lot of what we're seeing in the background in some of these early game trailers just to add that extra bit of depth. That'll be lovely and jubbly. Now not everybody will probably want some sort of toggle screen to set their own settings Maybe, you know, we could have our own custom expeditions where you can create your own expedition by getting parts of all the expeditions that we've had to date, chop and change them, mix and match and make your own sort of hybrid monster of an expedition for people to go play in. You could even set it inside of your hub zone and make sure that your expedition runs and maybe there's some sort of quick test button you can press that would ch test that system and find you all the planets that you need for your badges to actually work with inside of your hub zone. I think that could work quite nicely. It might take quite a lot of dev work, but that would take work from Hello Games away from Hello Games and put it over to the community. I'm thinking community created generated content could keep No Man's Sky alive so they can move to more developers from their current project No Man's Sky over to light no fire their new project to get it to the actual finish line that bit quicker now something in the most recent of trailers that hello games put out there for coming in 2024 we saw the new stations interiors and exteriors and we also saw a new ship type now i'm thinking that new ship type might be a racing ship. I've done a whole video on it, so I don't really want to revisit it, but I'll so I put that over there as to why I think ship racing is coming in. But ship racing could add a new dimension to play. You know, I know that we've got Exocraft races, and it's very rare that you come across an Exocraft racetrack that's out there, but the ones that are are extremely good fun. 
If they added in some sort of ship racing, that would kind of be pretty cool because you do have manoeuvrability on ships and you do try to make your ship as good as it possibly can be. If you had a racetrack for it, that would be a real freaking test. Heck yes it would. So other than ship racing, I think what they could also bring into the game is a raid system. So at the moment we've got factions, we've got guilds inside of No Man's Sky, but we don't really have any factional guild related missions per se. Not in the same way as the likes of, say, Destiny, where you get daily raids, weekly raids, monthly raids. It'd be nice if we had that sort of format inside of No Man's Sky with perhaps some Sentinel or Autophage rendered dungeons. A bit like we have the Derelict Freighters, but have them more like Sentinel settlements. Or the ability to jump into the void or the realm of glass now we've got talk of the void mother coming into game if we had those sort of raids going on what would the rewards be though i'm thinking new skins for like your ship for your actual armor for your multi-tools so you've got matching sets but those sort of sets could be say like a full-on organic set so it makes your own like you know alpha vector look like an organic or alpha vector or it changes it to an autophage out alpha vector or pirate one with decals and its colorization or maybe you could actually add a decal set that or shader set or skin set that's of the nexus almost like tron like with also like neon piping on it that'll be pretty darn sweet or a reflective armor set or you know, multiple sets ship set that's all reflective like beskar armor like in the mandalorian that'll be pretty darn snaz so there's all sorts they could add in. Even just a matte black one to make it look like Snake Eyes from G.I. Joe. You know, that'd be pretty darn sweet. The amount of times I've seen it where people's skins on their ship have glitched out and they've gone jet black. And they're like, oh my God, how do I keep it like this? You can't, sorry. Yes, jet matte black is not inside a game. They should add that in. So yeah, lots of different skin sets and I'm sure they could go to town with this. They could add in mixed colour, they could add in sort of like a, a chromatic set. They could do all sorts, couldn't they, with this? And they could add in, say, 12 different skin sets that could be rotated out or repeated year on year for anybody that misses them. I think that could work freaking nicely. You know, on a daily raid, maybe you're just going to be earning points to go towards a weekly reward. And maybe week one, you get the multi-tool skin. Week two, you get the ship skin. Week three, you get the armor skin. And when you've completed the whole thing, maybe then you get a freighter skin and frigate skins and exocraft exo skins if you manage to do the other weeks prior. Because then if you have missed anything, you've just got to wait till the next year for it to roll around again so you can try again. I think that could work freaking nicely, brief a little bit of life in and keep players coming back time and time again. And alongside that, I think they need to add in a new story arc. Yeah, we had, um, what's her name? Ariadne go missing in the week with this weekend summer lore from about two years back. Package that up as a side story, stick it into the game, just like you have with the Artemis quest line, the Ariadne quest line. Add that in. That'd be freaking great. Now, alongside like the Ariadne storyline, maybe add in a couple of ways of completing the game differently. Because at the moment, we can just purge the actual universe, or you can jump and birth a new star. It'd be nice if there was a couple more sort of alternative endings, and a few different other arc offs or branch offs from some of the existing storylines. Maybe something new of the Artemis quest line. Maybe jumping into the simulation and doing something there. I don't know. Just add in a little bit more story arcs. And also when it comes to adding in a bit more depth, I would say that the settlements are in vast need of a massive new breadth of life to settlements, people. Because at the moment, at a settlement, you're cast the role of an overseer, yet you don't get to really employ every single citizen. And I feel no kinship and no link to the citizens of my settlement. And also settlements right now, they can't come to Nintendo Switch. So I think if you did rework them in a way that made them feel like you've got a little bit more overseerness to them, and you micromanage them a little bit more, a bit more sim-like and added a lot more depth, you'd feel that more of a relationship to the actual citizens of your settlement. And if each settlement had its own citizens that had its own stats, so if you did employ a farmer, then your settlement is going to be a better farming community over when if you employed a scientist and maybe you could choose your commodities that your settlement is going to sell and when people other visitors come to your settlements to make purchases maybe you get a small amount of 
uh, Quicksilver alongside of that. So you get ambient growth from your settlement. So it makes it worth having a settlement. Because at the moment, I don't visit my settlement. I don't do anything with my settlement. I don't collect the resources for my settlement. If you let us pick our resources and then our farmers, our scientists and things like that helped build those up and give us a better yield, then I think that could work a far lot better when it comes to settlements. In fact, I made a whole video on how to rework settlements and what sort of stores and shops and markets to add to settlements. I've put a link over there, people in the viewerverse. Go hit that one up. Now, when it comes to giant megafauna, like these giant sandworms that got added into game, They've now got a red dot on them. You can't scan them. You can't do battle with them. But what if you could? I mean, Shaun of the Murrays did say it's not going to be fun if you got killed by a giant sandworm, but we can still get killed by a freaking tornado, meteorites or a volcano or a lightning strike. I would much rather get killed by a giant freaking large mega worm. It'd be nice. I mean, you can signpost these planets when you scan them. Like we see, it's got extreme weather. It could say extreme megafauna. And don't, don't just add in worms. Add in loads of extreme giant megafauna that can tear you a new one. And that could bring a real no nice sense of exploration looking for these megafauna. Maybe every megafauna that you kill or destroy, maybe it can award you with a base part of its skull. So yes, we can actually go out and start doing megafauna hunting in the universe that'll be freaking epic i know that might take quite a lot of work but i have seen inside of your light no fire that you've got quite a lot of megafaunas in there like giant octopuses giant crabs lift shift <laughs> maybe add the little subtle difference but yeah i i i think you've already got it put it inside a no man's sky let us go skull hunting yes i want to be the predator in mandalorian armor heck yes i do <laughs> So all in all, chums, what I'm saying when it comes to No Man's Sky in 2024, for No Man's Sky to have a really big year of next year, I think we need to have a little bit more story, a lot more depth adding to every single element of the game, especially the main four pillars, and the main arc, a lot more variety added to the planets to at least give us everything that was seen in the original trailers on top of what we've already got. Some sort of raid system, better mission systems, guild systems with awesome rewards that can be cycled year on, year out. The ability to create our own custom missions or expeditions or game modes. More content over to the actual community to generate into No Man's Sky to keep it alive, keep it breathing and keep it active. And I'm also thinking more game mechanics inside of game that keep it going. It's like the ship racing. I think that's quite a nice idea, but they might want to couple something in there like ship customization. Even if it's just a new class of ship, like these actual ship racers, maybe give us the ability to update them and upgrade them and customize them in ways, shapes and means even if it is just custom decals on them and colorations. But I also think having ship skins inside a game would be quite welcome as well. I mean, inside a Starfield, the main thing I do there now is ship customization. It's almost better than the full game. If we could add some of that inside of this, that'd be great. Now, I did make a video on ship customization using Photoshop and mockups and all sorts of stuff and how I think it could be implemented without harming the community. I'll put a link over there. Go check that one out, people. So that's everything that I feel that could really make 2024 a massive year for No Man's Sky for the community and free up developers over at Hello Games to help lift and shift them over to the new IP like No Fire and get that across the finish line that little bit quicker. But yeah, it's mainly quality of life, mainly adding depth and then hand in some of the reins over to the community to keep No Man's Sky going. That's pretty much the general gist of it. How they go about doing that in 2024 is anyone's guess. And you know what? Why not have a guess? Add yours inside of the video comments. Let us know what you think 2024 should look like when it comes to No Man's Sky. Until next time, goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again.